All right, internal anatomy of the kidney. So here it is cut um, cross section lengthwise. All right, so internal anatomy of the kidney. Here's the kidney cut lengthwise. You will do this in lab yourself. And we've already talked about the outer layer, which is called the renal cortex. And the inner part here is the renal medulla. Just like your adrenal cortex and adrenal medulla in terms of cortex is the outside. And that's not how you spell renal. Renal refers to kidneys, right? But of course, there's some other anatomy here. We've got um, within most of the kidney is composed of nephrons. They're not shown in this picture, but we're going to look at them as the functional unit of the kidney that does filtration of the blood and then reabsorbs and secretes based on what we need the kidneys to do. So urine production is actually gonna happen in the nephrons and collecting ducts is another um, where that fluid is collected. From the collecting ducts, the urine is going to, so now it's urine. This is where urine formation, so actually let's do blood to filtrate to urine. That's what's gonna happen in the nephron and collecting duct. So urine is going to enter these, let me actually draw it in yellow. Gonna enter these guys right here. These are calyces. There's a um, minor and major. major. Um, calyx is one. Um, so here's, this is the, the major shown right here. These, these guys right here. Okay, from the calyx, the urine is gonna enter the renal pelvis. That's this right here. Pelvis, renal pelvis, right? This is not the pelvis of bone. So urine is going to keep going down that way. And actually let's just have it keep going, right? There's the ureter. So it's gonna go out the ureter. So that's the path of urine. There's a few other structures I want you to know in the kidney. Um, well, I'm gonna go over, I actually don't have most of them as, as key terms. Um, this right here, we're gonna have some structures in between these pyramids. Go in there. So these are pyramids. You can see how they're kind of pyramid shaped. Renal pyramid. In between them, there's columns. There's a fibrous capsule outside of outside of the kidney. I think that's it. And you'll see this in lab. We're going to zoom into um, nephrons soon. But I want you to have an idea of where you are in the kidney when we're talking about cortex medulla primarily. The last thing for this gross anatomy is blood flow. This is gonna be important when we talk about nephrons. I'm actually gonna show you a nephron in just a minute here. I don't expect you to know everything I'm gonna um, go over. I'll show you in the key terms which things. So we've got blood coming in from the renal artery. Nice, simple name there. That's where blood comes in, um, in initially from the aorta. That blood is going to um, continue and divide here. There's our segmental arteries. Those are going to divide into arteries that go into each lobe. So like here, here. So these are our, these are the interlober arteries. There was a whole section in your blood vessel chapter that went through all the names of the blood vessels for like a lot of the body. These are the only ones I'm even going to tell you about. 
um, and you don't need to know all of them. So we've got the blood vessels continuing into low bar. Those are going to split like here and become the arcuate. So that's that as well as that split there. Now, most importantly, um, we're, we're getting important here. We've got cortical radiate artery. And then, you know, the blue thing is probably going to be cortical radiate vein. So we have this little tuft coming up with oxygenated blood. This is where we're going to have the switch to, we're going to have a gas exchange and blood then leaving as the cortical radiate vein. The names for the veins then pretty much go in, in opposite. So you've got the arcuate vein, um, interlobar vein, and I am going to label renal vein. I believe there actually are not segmental veins. I actually want to zoom into the picture where I, in between, right here, this is where the action happens. By action, I mean filtration. The blood is going to be filtered to become filtrate, which eventually will become urine. So let's zoom in to this place here. This is what that's going to look like. Uh, we'll just clear, I guess, this stuff here, which I said you didn't need to know anyways. Okay, the, let's just get rid of that as well. Cortical radiate artery is going to divide and branch into the afferent arterioles. You know about arterioles. So that is right here. This is happening in this little space we can't see. Afferent arterioles are gonna be um, in contact with this crazy structure, which is a nephron. This is where blood is filtered to become filtrate and eventually become urine. So the afferent arteriole is where that filtration is going to occur. We'll look, we'll zoom into this structure in a bit. The efferent arteriole is still an arteriole. It's called efferent because we're going away from this important structure right here, which is the glomerulus. So afferent and efferent refer to where filtration occurs, which is right there. We're still an arterial, so still oxygenated blood. The efferent arterial is going to wrap around this nephron. This is going to be called either the this vasorecta or peritubular capillaries. We'll look at each of these in a bit. Either way, they're capillaries that are going to be where um, more stuff is exchanged to regulate fluid, to regulate filtrate composition, ultimately urine composition, and also gas exchange can take place for our, our nephron. So by the time we leave this paratubular capillaries or vasorecta, we have become a vein. This vein here is our cortical radiate vein, which is going to then lead to the arcuate vein, interlobar vein, renal vein. Okay, we will see this detail again when we get to the nephron. I want to introduce it with the blood vessels 